So one of my friends asked me, hey Jan, you know a bit about Postman and I'm always struggling to do authentication uh, or, or get a nice token uh, for, for my request. What's a good way to do this? How can, how can you help me with this? So this video is about, well, getting an authorization token, a nice bearer token uh, in Postman and use it in your API requests. So today is about creating a token in Postman, which can be used to access a backend API. And this backend API might be something you have created yourself. I'm mostly working in, uh, in Azure and using the AAD as my, well, the, the, the place where I uh, manage my users, my applications and set the roles for those users and applications. So that's something I'm gonna use today also. And uh, later on, we're gonna create a token in Postman to use uh, for, for my to access my application. So first to the Azure portal. Over here you see me being in uh, the Azure Active Directory. It's in my, my personal tenant and uh, this is the app registration uh, blade where you can see I have a couple of app registrations already. Uh, for today's demo, I'm gonna use the Postman demo app which I've prepared already. Uh, it has all the uh, requirements to get a nice token for me as a person. Uh, so to set it up, uh, well, what it comes down to is create a new app registration. And when setting up an app registration, you can just press next, next, finish, or provide some useful information, of course. So going through the different blades, First, there's the authentication blade uh, and what you need to do over here, and you can do this during the initial setup also, is provide the, well, the, the redirect URI. Uh, normally, or when you're using this in a real project, this redirect URI will be something from your own application or the application which will handle the, the callback from AID. For Postman, this is it, the HTTPS oauth.postman.io slash v1 slash callback. And this URL will uh, uh, handle the incoming token. One other thing uh, to remember is to set uh, the, the check mark here at access tokens because I want to use the implicit flow in today's video. Um, I won't go over the details uh, for this in this video. Uh, if you want to know more about OAuth tokens, let me know, uh, or the different OAuth flows, let me know in the comments and I can create a different video on that. But today I'm gonna use the implicit flow to get a nice token from me as a user. Only using my own tenant, uh, so no need to do any multi-tenant stuff. For the API permissions, we don't need anything for, for well, uh, for, for this demo application. So the user read on Microsoft Graph is good enough. It will get me some details about me as a user. The expose an API is useful. Um, I've added a couple of scopes. To add scopes, you first need to define an application ID um, and, and what I always do, and I think it's the best practice nowadays, is make it API semicolon slash slash the GUI of your application, the client ID. You can do any URL over here, but I, uh, this is a nice convention, or at least I think it's a nice convention. Once you have this application ID, URI, you can also define different scopes. So I have two at this moment, ingestion and management. And these scopes can be used to request access to certain parts of your application. Who can consent, administrators only. Uh, you can create some nice descriptions and titles uh, for this. Not necessary per se. Won't go over the other details like uh, authorized client applications today in this video, but if you want to know more about this, let me know. What I like most about, well, working with .NET and working with AAD is using roles. I can assign roles to 
users to men's identities to to groups of people uh, and get well provide them different kinds of access and authorizing people on controllers or on any piece of your uh, uh, application can be done easily with these roles by well adding the authorized attribute and a specific role I've defined three over here, administrators, readers, and writers. Each have their own, well, the description and purpose. Um, and um, yeah, that, that's basically it. And to get this working for me, because I have not assigned anything over here, I need to go to the, well, to the actual enterprise application, the Postman demo app, which gets created automatically when creating the app registration in the portal. So over here, this is an instance of the app registration. Again, if you want to know more about it, leave a comment. Uh, sounds like a broken record. Um, but over here, you can assign uh, users different roles of your in your application. So I've added two roles to myself, writer and reader, uh, but I can, well, assign any user to any role and you can even assign managed identities or service principles different roles uh, uh, for, for this enterprise application. So that's the initial setup you need to do in AAD. And well, to add this stuff to your backend application, you need to do some wiring up of the authorization authentication part. That's not something we'll cover in this video. So and this is not everything you need to know. There's also another piece you need to know and this is the endpoints the endpoints of aad the oauth2 endpoints of aad these can be found in the endpoints uh, uh, button and they are all blurred over here but you need the authorization endpoint and our authorization token endpoint uh, both can be filled out in in, in the postman uh, which i'm going to show you right now so over here we have Postman. Uh, this is the uh, the Postman demo collection five. It's a copy of the demo collection four, which I've used in a previous video. Um, and over here you can see I have selected the authorization tab in the overview. So this is the folder demo collection five. And this is the authorization tab. And this is the place where we need to be. So you can select just about every authorization method over here. API key, bearer token, job bearer, all of them. I'm using OAuth 2 now because AAD supports OAuth 2, which we just saw in the endpoint section of AAD. Uh, I want to put the authorization token in, in the request headers, and I have no available tokens at the moment, which is good. Header prefix is bearer, something we know and love from, well, uh, working in, in a backend or working with uh, web development. Auto refresh token, you can select this. I mostly, well, don't, but it's certainly something you can consider if you're working all day uh, testing your, your backend. So nice name for your, for your token. I'm using Postman demo. And as I mentioned, I'm more than, I want to use the implicit flow. And for the implicit flow, uh, what, what's great about this is I don't need any secrets here in Postman. I can just fill out some public details over here, so, like the, the login Microsoft Online, tenant ID, OAuth2, V2, authorize. So this is the, the OAuth2 endpoint uh, which, which you need to fill out. Uh, I need the client ID, which is the client ID from the app registration, and I need the, the scope which I want to get access for. I've selected the ingestion scope for, for now, and, and we can use this uh, to, to get the, the token. Nothing else is necessary. I can press the get access token now. It will load a page, your call is authenticated, and will do a callback to Postman, and Postman will receive the access token necessary. Um, the first time you do this, you'll get some consent screen. Do you want uh, uh, stating, do you want Postman demo app to collect your data for this? Well, the data which is uh, 
which is required for this app to work, uh, you just press yes, or your administrator has done this for the whole app, uh, for a whole organization, and then you you're done with it. And you see here in Postman on the back end, there's an access token. I'm gonna press the use token, and this token will contain well the the scope and my roles. I'm gonna copy paste it and decode it on Jot.io. So we're here on Jot.io and you can paste your token in here. I'm gonna do this right now. And you can see all the details which are stored in this token, like the audience, the, the issuer, but also who I am. Uh, the, this is data known in the AAD, and the object ID of, of, of me and which roles I have and what the scope is for this token. So this is all great stuff, and this can be sent to uh, to the, the the backend. So we added the use token, and now if you want to use this token for all the requests you have, you have this authorization tab, and you can say inherit from parent, which will use the OAuth2 uh, authorization from the demo collection five. You can also set this per request if you want. So if this delete, for example, needs a different kind of authorization, um, you can set this for, for this uh, specific request. So that's all to it uh, for this video. I will do a follow-up on, on how to make this even better, uh, but this is a great uh, thing to get you started in the UI of Postman and when working with AAD or any other OAuth2 provider. Thanks for watching and see you next time.